Welcome to God's Word Fellowship. I'm Gerald Santiago. This is the Watchman Prayer Teachings. Let's pray. Father, we come to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you so much for your glorious love for us. Abruna haganala gro thra rathra mena na long gro bena thra rathra erkena menon thra mena hogro mena hoko pale ke yelendine na thra ne mena abru hongro mena la hogro bena thra. Father, it is your will to raise up intercessors all over the world. And Father, we pray that you teach and train people to intercede. Grant us wisdom. knowledge understanding and skill to intercede and to understand in the gap for our land for our nation for our state for our city for our local areas for our families for individuals abrun and rare hagna or kanala hai kalandra manatra may your good hand be upon us and fashion us and shape us and mold us into people who can pray and receive answers who can change the direction of nations the direction of a city the direction of a household hallelujah hallelujah to jesus glory be to your holy name blessed be your holy name Father, you are our King, our Maker, our God. And Father, we now set our eyes upon you. Father, we pray, Elkana, Brona, Thra, let every kind of disease, every form of disease, every form of suffering, depart in the name of my Lord Jesus Christ. Father, may your anointing break every yoke, remove every burden. Father, comfort the hearts of people, strengthen them in spirit, soul and body. Bohalatra Minandra, let the might of the Almighty God manifest itself in the individual lives of the body of Christ, the believers, in their families, in their children, in their marriage, in their business, in their jobs, in their ministries, in the assignments you have granted them. Let the might and the glory of God manifest through the body of Christ. Let the world take notice that the glory of God has risen upon the body of Christ. Hebron and Thra, the solution bringers, the problem solvers, the Samsons of God. the josephs of god arson 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 it's time it's time it's time hallelujah hallelujah to jesus glory be to god blessed be your holy name abron andre neletra and this is a prayer teaching we should pray don't you think so <laughs> hallelujah let's pray Ebro na la haganandre oro na landra may the glory of god manifest through the body of christ let there be unity in the body of christ let us be one as you and our lord jesus christ are one let's have one heart and one soul may the god of patience and consolation grant us to be like minded towards one another according to christ jesus that we may with one mind and one mouth glorify the god and the father of our lord jesus christ abana hagana latwa may the god of our lord jesus christ the father of glory reveal your covenant to us your inheritance to us which you have given us through our lord jesus christ may the body of christ rise up like a lion dry that rises out of sleep habana hagna balatra like juda hebron and thra like the lion of juda hoglon and thra hekran alandra urkene legra let's go to a particular passage in the bible let's read that together habona latra 
go with me to book of genesis the book of genesis and let's read um, chapter 49 this is the blessing that jacob places upon his children on the patriarchs of the 12 tribes and there is a blessing that's spoken upon judah and let's read that together please open your bibles and read it along with me and let's pray habruna lahekene or konalandna ebrushkene obrun and rereshem orohagland rereshendram hallelujah to jesus hallelujah to jesus genesis 49 Hallelujah to Jesus. Let's read from verse 8. Judah, thou art he whom your brethren shall praise. Your hand shall be in the neck of your enemies. No more will the body of Christ tremble at the roar of its enemies. <laughs> it's one thing to roar at a lamb. It's a totally different story when you roar. at samson it's an entirely different ball game when you roar at samson may the body of christ function like samson abron and andre karan in the name father let your samsons arise abron and andre rashidra hallelujah to jesus we will keep reading and pray now we'll just do that together hallelujah your hand shall be in the neck of your enemies now the body of his <laughs> christ is not going to run at the roar of its adversaries now we are actually going to put a hand on the neck of our enemies meaning we will have total victory hallelujah that's what it is you can see this displayed in various places in the bible let me show you some go with me to i think it is joshua chapter 10 you know after the defeat of uh, some mighty kings you know they come together and um, joshua asks them to do something hallelujah and to the to jesus look at this read this together with me let's read from verse 22 joshua chapter 10 verse 22 Then said Joshua, "Open the mouth of the cave and bring out those five kings unto me out of the cave." These five kings joined as an alliance together, right, to defeat the body of Christ. I'm sorry, to defeat Israel, right? And um, so here, Joshua, with God's great help, you know, God stopped the sun and the moon for the sake of His people, right? when uh, joshua called upon god god did this god heard the voice of a man and actually stopped the sun and the moon hallelujah look at verse 23 and you know, some people want to argue about it i don't give <laughs> i don't want to give even a second of my time to such nonsense the bible says it i believe it that settles it that's it no arguments here verse 23 and they did so and brought forth those five kings unto him out of the cave and the king of jerusalem the king of hebron the king of jarmud the king of lachish and the king of eglon verse 24 and it came to pass when they brought out those kings unto joshua that joshua called for all the men of israel and said unto the captains of the men of war which went with him come near come near put your feet upon the necks of these kings What did he say? Come put your feet upon the necks of these kings. And they came near and put their feet upon the necks of them. And this was to illustrate to them that God has put their adversaries under their feet. And that they have total dominance and total victory over their adversaries. Hallelujah. This is what God wants for his body. The body of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. is exactly what god wants total complete dominance over adversaries verse 25 and joshua said unto them fear not nor be dismayed be strong and of good courage for thus shall the lord do to all your enemies against whom you fight 
This is exactly what God will do. Well, whichever nation you live in, whichever state you live in, whichever city you live in, this is what God wants to do for your adversaries. Hallelujah. God wants to give you total and complete victory. There is another place which in where this is illustrated. Go with me to Psalm, Psalm 18. This is part of the mercies of David, which was upon our Lord Jesus. And as the body of Christ, we are heirs to the blessing of our Lord Jesus. And we are co-heirs with our Lord Jesus. So look at this. Hallelujah to Jesus. Let's read from verse um, 37. I have pursued my enemies, similar to what Joshua did, and overtaken them. Neither did I turn again till they were consumed. You know, this is exactly what Joshua did. See, God had given those people into their hands. The reason he asked God to stop the sun and the moon on their tracks was because um, he wanted to finish the job. If these guys go back into their fortresses and in their fortified cities, you know, it's going to be you know, battle after battle after battle. Now, now, these guys were in his hands right now. It's time to finish the job. Hallelujah. So that's why Joshua called upon God to stop the sun and the moon so that he can finish the job. He didn't turn back until they were consumed. Hallelujah. Verse 38, I have wounded them that they were not able to rise. They are fallen under my feet. Total dominance, total victory. This is what God wants for his body, the body of Christ. For thou hast girded me with strength unto the battle. Now, you understand that we are not talking about physical battle, right? <laughs> we, are not, we are not going to take swords and uh, guns and fight people in the battle. No, that's not what he's, we are talking about, the body of Christ, right? Body of Christ will overcome all adversaries in every field, in every field. Hallelujah. And, um, for thou hast girded me with strength unto the battle. Thou hast subdued under me those that rose up against me. Thou hast also given me the necks of my enemies that I might destroy them that hate me. They cried, but there was none to save them, even unto the Lord, but he answered them not. Then did I beat, then did I beat them small as the dust before the wind. I did cast them out as the dirt in the streets. Thou hast delivered me from the strivings of the people. Okay. The reason I read this passage is because this is not some isolated passage. Right? This is how God thinks about giving victory for his people. This is what God did for the devil. Our Lord Jesus spoiled principalities and powers. Right? Stripped them totally, completely. Go with me to Colossians. Colossians. Colossians, chapter 2. Let's read from verse um, 15. And having spoiled principalities and powers, that's the devil and his forces, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over the minute. And this is talking about in the olden days when the kings win a victory over the enemy nation. They will cut off the thumbs of the opponent, the king and the warriors, so that they can't hold the sword anymore. And they will tie them up in chains and drag them around, you know, and, uh, you know, in, in a display of their conquest and their dominance over their adversaries. They will do it in the cities, where people will stand and watch and cheer. They will drag their enemies through the cities in full display for everyone to see. That's what our Lord Jesus did for the devil and his forces, for all of the spiritual realm to watch. God and his angels, everybody was watching what our Lord Jesus did. He spoiled the devil and his forces. And spoiled means defeat them totally and take away all their stuff, all their armor, their weapons, their treasures, everything, the keys. You know, this is what our Lord Jesus said. Go with me to the book of Revelation. When did our Lord Jesus take the key from the devil? Look at verse um, 18. Revelation chapter 1 verse 18. I am he that lives and was dead. Behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. 
Now Jesus whipped the devil and took the keys of hell and death from the devil. You understand that? Totally, completely defeated him and took his stuff. And he also took all the people who were captive, who were kept captive in the, you know, at one point of time, paradise was not in heaven. Abraham's bosom was under the earth. There was two separate portions, right? One where the wicked suffered, the other where the righteous actually rested. Right? Abraham's bosom it was called. And then they, but they were all under the earth. They were not in heaven at that point of time. After the Lord Jesus defeated the devil, paid the price for the sin, he released the captives and took them up to heaven. Hallelujah. That's when you can see in Matthew it talks about in the holy ones appearing to different people after the resurrection of our Lord Jesus. Right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. So, why are we looking at all this? Okay. Because our Lord Jesus defeated the devil, took all his stuff, took his power, took his um, authority, took his stuff, took the keys, spoiled him. Hallelujah, took all his stuff. Now, this does not mean that the devil doesn't have any authority or power in the world today. You know, you know, you can see him trying to dominate different places, but we can enforce the victory of Jesus upon him. Hallelujah. And, uh, uh, okay, let's not go into that. That's not our topic, so I'm not going to go into that. Right? But you have to understand this. Having spoiled principalities and powers, our Lord Jesus spoiled principalities and powers. He made a show of them openly, so he dragged them around, made a public display of them, triumphing over them in it. He triumphed over them. This is a display, a total, complete victory. See, this is part of the mercies of David. You understand this? Hmm? Now, sometimes when I read Psalm 80, I think David was <laughs> talking about what our Lord Jesus did for the devil. <laughs> right? Because it's, it's, it's um, the description and rather than the picture is more apt to that than anything else I have seen in the Bible. Right? Anything else I've seen in the Bible. I think, you know, this is my opinion. When I read that psalm, I think it's talking about the victory of Jesus over the forces of hell. Right? Anyway, let's keep reading. Hallelujah to Jesus. Mm. Hallelujah. So, this is what God wants for the body of Christ. So, let's go back to Genesis. Let's pray. Hallelujah to Jesus. Ebrona Hagan and Etra. Erkonomolondre Nene Reboretra. Let's go to Genesis 49. Let's read the blessing that's given to Judah. Judah, thou art he whom your brethren shall praise. Your hand shall be in the neck of your enemies. We are talking about the triumphant church. The body of Christ is no more a weakling running and hiding. Trembling at the roar of their adversaries. No. The Lion of Judah is risen. The Lion of Judah is risen. The Lion of Judah is roaring. Your father's children shall bow down before thee. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down and he couched as a lion and as an old lion. Who shall rouse him up? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet. Right? This is talking about David's line to begin with. Until Shiloh come, the son of David, right? to whom God has given the throne of David. And to whom shall the gathering of the people be? Right? The people, not just Israel, but all, all people. Binding his foal unto the wine, and his ass is colt unto the choice wine. He washed his garments in wine, and his clothes in the blood of grapes. It talks about his prosperity, right? The body of Christ will be prosperous. <laughs> when you wash your garments in wine, <laughs> you are one prosperous fellow. His eyes is red with wine. No, no, this is not talking about getting drunk, all right? <laughs> I want to mention that. And his teeth white with milk 
when you when you drink so much milk that your teeth gets white and you are one prosperous fellow so something is going to mark there are a couple of things that's going to mark the body of christ in this time and age one is total dominant victory the other is prosperity overflowing abundant prosperity and you should be praying for this in the body of christ hallelujah hallelujah to jesus na bruna thara shantra he he le corona menendre a bruna ndana la corona le father we pray for your goodness to manifest through your people your abundant goodness overflowing goodness our cup runs over father our cup is not just full our cup overflows surely goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our life hallelujah hallelujah to jesus glory be to god abruna langra natwar shele hallelujah to jesus glory be to god father we thank you so much you heard and answered our prona lakra ne abruna landina abrol hagranandra me god arise and the may his enemies be scattered the glory of god rise upon the body of christ rise upon the body of christ everywhere everywhere in all nations in all states in all cities in all villages all towns all churches everywhere everywhere may the glory of god arise father we thank you for your marvelous help father we thank you for your glorious help father in the name of our lord jesus we pray amen hallelujah hallelujah to jesus hallelujah to jesus hallelujah to jesus you know the holy ghost is leading me to pray now we will do prayers in these watchman series from now on we will press holy ghost leads today we prayed for a long time maybe not so much next time i don't know let's follow the holy spirit hallelujah so go with me to the book of uh, isaiah isaiah hallelujah to jesus in the book of isaiah let's read uh, hallelujah to jesus let's read chapter 62 beginning from verse 1 hallelujah to jesus go let's go back a little bit go with me to i say 60 verse 1 you know we talk about the darkness covering the earth and the gross darkness in its talk it's spoken about in verse 2 right but we miss the first verse and the second part of the second verse let's look at the verse 1 arise shine ebron and rer shelakratra ebron this is for the body of christ let's pray for the body of christ hallelujah arise shine let the body of christ arise and shine for your light is come the glory of the lord is risen upon thee for behold the darkness will cover the earth the gross darkness the people but the lord will arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee and the gentiles shall come to your light the gentiles will come you talk about the end time harvest what's going to bring the end time harvest the glory of god upon the body of christ and kings to the brightness of your rising who is going to come to the body of christ right <laughs> kings the glory that's going to manifest through the body of christ is going to impress even kings it's not easy to impress kings but even kings will be impressed by the brightness that god is going to bestow upon the body of christ we should pray for this this these passages should become your prayer scriptures these should become your prayer points 
Hallelujah. You want to pray for your church? You want to pray for the body of Christ? These are the passages you should be praying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. Okay, now we can go to 62. Verse 1. For Zion's sake, you know, the body of Christ is God's Zion, right? Hebrews 12 talks about that. For Zion's sake, I will not hold my peace. For the sake of the body of Christ, I will not hold my peace. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest. You know, I am saying this by the Holy Spirit. God is calling upon you to give yourself to praying in tongues at least for an hour a day. At least, at least. Now, if some of you are not in that place, start where you are. At least start praying 15, 20 minutes. But, you know, this call is for people. God is specifically calling upon people to dedicate yourself, to commit to yourself, to pray in tongues at least one hour a day. So that the plans and the purposes of God can be fulfilled not just in your place, in your city, in your locality, but all over the world in the entire body of Christ. All over the body of Christ. Dedicate yourself, commit to yourself, give yourself to praying in tongues at least one hour a day. Now I understand not all of you will be doing this, but if you would commit to this, God will build your life. See, that's the blessing about intercession. There is a blessing for intercession. Hmm? Study the book of um, chapter Isaiah, chapter 61. It's basically the law of the anointing. The first part talks about the anointing upon the Lord Jesus. See, that anointing is functioning through the body of Christ today. Right? That same anointing that was upon our Lord Jesus Christ is functioning through the body of Christ today. Hallelujah. Notice second verse 2. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of the vengeance of our God. You know, vengeance is manifesting now. Vengeance. Not anger. Vengeance. To comfort, all, and there is a difference between anger and vengeance. To comfort all that mourn. 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 It's not talking about people having a boohoo. It's talking about people who intercede. Right? You go study the Bible and, and look at the word, how the word moan is used. It's talking about intercessors. Let me give you an example. Go with me. First Samuel, chapter 15. Hallelujah to Jesus. Towards the end of the chapter, Let's look at, you know, Solomon, Samuel anointed Saul to be king and he prayed for him and he spoke the word to him, gave him directions, he did all that. Right? And at one point of time, God simply rejected from being king. And look at verse 35, And Samuel came no more to see Saul until the day of his death. Nevertheless, Samuel mourned for Saul. Mourned meaning he interceded for Saul. <laughs> And the Lord repented that he had made Saul king over Israel. Verse chapter 16, verse 1. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. This is See, this is where the fulfillment of the prophecy that was spoken over Jacob came to pass. Right. The reason God didn't give them people a king, did not want to give people a king, because that was not the part of his original plan. God did not say anything about Benjamin being the king. God spoke about Judah, right, being the lawgiver, and the scepter will not depart from Judah. So Saul, Saul was provided people because people insisted they wanted a king ahead of God's timing. Ahead of God's timing. Hallelujah. God had already promised Abraham that kings would come out of his lawns. Right? It was told to Jacob as well. And you see that we just read the prophecy that was given to 
Judah, right, by Jacob. All right, now, for I have provided me a king among his sons. Who provided? God. That time Saul was something people demanded. Right? People demanded and God, you know, until the time David would be born. Right? God waited. Saul was a stopgap, you know. He was just to fill in until David showed up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. So, Samuel, the reason I brought you here was... Uh, I guess the Holy Ghost brought us here for multiple purposes. But you see, he was mourning, right? Or interceding for Saul. But the time came when God wanted to move on. So God said, let's move on, right? Stop. Look at Nehemiah. 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 Three. No, sorry. Let's go to one, right? Look at this. Verse 4, And it came to pass when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days and fasted right, and prayed before the God of heaven. So here it is talking about mourning in terms of not just you know having a boohoo. It's talking about mourning in, in intercession. In intercession. Before the God of heaven. Right? Um, hallelujah to Jesus. Go to Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 9. Look at this. You know, there is judgment coming upon um, the city. But God is saying something for the intercessor. Right? Look at verse 4. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark. Say, set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Right? Hallelujah to Jesus. So, uh, this is a mark of protection. This mark of protection is for people who sigh and cry for all the abomination that be done in the midst thereof. Meaning it's not just having a boohoo. You know, these people were looking at all the evil that is being done and they were mourning or interceding for that purpose so that the God would you know, cleanse the city, and stop the evil, remove this wickedness from the city. They were mourning on behalf of the city. So God is placing a mark of protection upon these people. Even though judgment is coming upon the city, it did not touch the intercessors. If you read um, verse 6, it says, Slay, utterly old, young, both maids, little children and women, both, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark. Begin at my sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient men which were before the house. Right? So the reason I brought you here is to show you that this mourning, this sighing, this crying, right, is talking about intercessors. I see a 62. Right, 61. I say 61 is the blessing of the intercessor. It is the law of the anointing. Hallelujah. We'll talk more about that as the Holy Spirit leads. But today I want to introduce that to you. I say 61. Right? To comfort all that mourn. This is the blessing our Lord Jesus spoke about in Matthew. Hallelujah. I want you to see this. Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. Look at verse 4. Blessed are they that mourn, not people which may have a boohoo, for they shall be comforted. Who are the people who are going to walk in the blessing? The intercessors. These are various things. All these things are principles to walk in the blessing. Everything that is listed here. They are all principles of the blessing. One principle of the blessing is intercession. I'm not saying it's the only principle. One principle of the blessing is intercession. Right? So, this is what is being listed out in Isaiah 61. Let's go back to Isaiah 61. To point unto them that 
mourn that intercede in Zion in the body of Christ. To give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. This is one reason why when you praise, when you have a burden and you keep interceding, you have uh, all of a sudden a note of victory comes, you know. This is why. That they who, the people who intercede, might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he, God, may be glorified. They, these people, the intercessors, will build the old wastes. They will raise up the former desolations. You can see this blessing in, in a, being mentioned in Isaiah 58 also. There also you fast and pray and mourn before God or intercede before God. Right? And they, the people who pray, the intercessors, they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, and the sons of the aliens shall be your plowmen and your wine dressers. Why? Because these people are going about the business of God. God will appoint other people to help them. But you shall be named the priests of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. God will bring in riches for the intercessors. And in their glory shall you boast yourselves. Here the glory is talking about wealth and riches. Hallelujah. For your shame you shall have double. The intercessors will have the double blessing. And for confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. You will, have, you will actually rejoice in your portion. Therefore in their land they shall possess the double. In your land wherever you are. You will possess the double. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. Right? Study the entire chapter. Study Isaiah 60, 61, 62 two together. They are all connected. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. The blessing of the intercessor. Give yourself to praying in tongues at least one hour every day. And intercede in you within your understanding as the Holy Spirit leads. God will bring great blessings upon you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you. Jesus is coming soon. Please do share our message with your friends, family, relatives, right? uh, fellow believers, right? people whom you know. Share it with them. God will honor you. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you.